Does weed open doors to demons? A lot of people wonder this. Even people who smoke weed very often, they also wonder it because they've had experiences on high dose edibles or, you know, super big bong rips and these experiences terrified them or were super weird or something crazy happened and sometimes it's very scarring. And or they try to quit and they can't quite quit and it just there's kind of an addiction forming and a lot of people wonder this and it's actually been wondered out throughout mankind, the spiritual properties of cannabis, of weed and what it does, you know? But first, I want to make it clear, to actually get high, for those who don't know, you need activated THC and CBD. These are both found in marijuana, which is the flower of the cannabis plant. To have activated THC, it needs to be heated to 230 degrees Fahrenheit. That's why people smoke it. You have to smoke it to actually experience the feeling of being high. So when they're together, synergistically, that's what creates the psychoactive properties and the psychoactive experience of being high, being stoned, altered state of consciousness. Not just having CBD alone. If you have CBD alone, you don't get high. There's no psychoactive properties. Actually, CBD is very common nowadays, being studied pharmaceutically, medicinally. It's actually treating epilepsy patients who see a 44% reduction in the frequency of seizures and it's being used to treat chemo patients, nausea, vomiting. It's very anti-inflammatory. There's a lot of great properties that it's being used for nutritionally. And also, for those who don't know, the hemp fiber of the cannabis plant, the stalk, is one of the strongest fibers that's naturally occurring ever found in the world. George Washington, he said, grow hemp. It's a cash crop for economic reasons. The hemp leaf, the hemp seeds, the hemp seeds are actually very nutritionally beneficial. They have a three to one ratio of omega-3s and omega-6s, which are essential fatty acids for the human body. So not the whole plant of cannabis is bad, but is smoking the flower and actually experiencing this feeling of being high, is that bad? I'm gonna get into that. And I'm gonna talk about the history of cannabis. I'm gonna talk about the origins of cannabis and where it actually came from and how it's actually been used. Some people, like Bob Marley, believe that it's spiritually beneficial you know, that you actually become your true self, he said. More loving, more compassionate. And the Rastafarians called it ganja. Well, ganja, the word ganja comes from the ancient Indians, actually. And this is their mid-grade form of consuming cannabis. They have a low-grade form, low potency, which is called bang. It's a liquid form. And then they have a high-grade form, which is like a resin, a hash, which they call charas, charas. They have three different types that are mentioned in history in the documents. And these types were actually used religiously in religious rituals laid out in the Vedic scriptures. The same scriptures that have the whole spiritual doctrine of yoga, the different spiritual doctrines of all of Hinduism come from the Vedas. The Bhagavad Gita is used as well and a lot of lore, a lot of stories of Hinduism as well. But the Vedas were the scriptures that were written by the ancient yogis and the ancient sages that outline the meaning of life, the true path of awakening, enlightenment, of breaking the cycle of reincarnation, of all the different pantheon of gods and goddesses, which we know are demons. It's their actual demons that inhabit people. You know, when people worship these demons in bhakti yoga, where they summon them, they believe they have different qualities about them, different spirits have different things that can benefit their life. They actually summon them, they chant them, I've done this. I'm a certified yoga instructor. I know this. Um, the whole philosophy of yoga actually comes from the Upanishads, which is a segment, a portion of the Vedic scriptures that outlines merging your consciousness with the God consciousness, with the deity Brahman, and that yourself is just an illusion and that you need to break free from the cycle of reincarnation and all of suffering by reaching a divine state of consciousness, union with the God consciousness, and awareness that you are God, then that's, that state is called samadhi or moksha, which is just pure bliss. That's when you break out of the cycle. That's the core objective of Hinduism and yoga. Do you know where this came from? Well, it came from the ancient sages. And the ancient sages said and wrote that they used cannabis, very high doses of cannabis, to communicate with these beings. One of them being Shiva. Just Google Shiva and cannabis. Still today, Hindus worship Shiva while high on cannabis. Many of Shiva, they call Lord Shiva's devotees. They smoke weed, they smoke cannabis, and worship Shiva. These ancient Hindus got divine revelation from these beings, from these demons, 
while super high on weed. And that's historical fact. Many of the doctrines that came from Hinduism literally came from the communication with these divine beings. And we know that these doctrines are of demons. These are doctrines of demons, just like it's mentioned in the book of Timothy. You know, this is a real thing. Hinduism, which leads people into this state of thinking that they're an illusion, worshiping demons that they get possessed with and actually need to be cast out. You know, these demons possess people, torment them. You know, when they turn to God, when they turn to Christ, they turn on these people. They torment them. People who do Ouija boards and contact spirits and then get possessed, they actually need to get delivered. And some people who smoke weed, like studies show, there's a two to four times increased chance of psychosis, uh, increased chance of schizophrenia. But is that all demons? You know, no. Some schizophrenia is just mental illness. There's actually a mental disorder that's formed. But could some be? Could some psychosis, schizophrenia from one weed trip be something demonic that was open in the spiritual realm? Where I've met many people who've had one weed experience that caused something like this. And it is demonic possession. But these demons can be cast out and fully cast out and never come back by the power and authority of Jesus Christ. I've cast demons out of people. Actual people, actual demons out of people that come in through specific doors. Now, weed is clearly an open door to demons. Tibetan Buddhism, they used weed to facilitate uh, deeper states of meditation. This is, we have historical documents on as well. They used cannabis. If you know anything about Tibetan Buddhism, it's very similar to Hinduism and the whole pursuit of yoga, which is that yourself is an illusion and that to break out of the cycle of reincarnation, out of the cycle of karma, you need to transcend your consciousness to that divine state they call nirvana. And that's done through deep meditation. So these philosophies are very intertwined with the usage of cannabis. Some people think that, oh, the, the ancient Hebrews and the Israelites used weed and Moses was smoking weed and you know, in the holiest of holies, people were hotboxing it. And Isaiah and Isaiah 6 had a, a coal from a seraphim touched his lips and it was actually him getting high. And some pretty crazy beliefs, but they believe that this kane, kane, which is a Hebrew word, which means a reed or a stalk, an aromatic reed or a stalk, which is mentioned in a few verses. It's mentioned in Song of Solomon 4:14. Isaiah chapter 43, 24, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 2, Ezekiel 27, verse 19. A few other mentionings of this word kane, which is an aromatic reed, but people think that it's cannabis, that it's actually marijuana, but it's a reed or a stalk. It's not a flower. It's not a plant like cannabis is. So it's not weed. They're not smoking weed. There's actually no mention of any man or woman in the Bible ever taking anything, any drug, that altered their consciousness to come closer to God, to come closer to knowing who God is. Never, not once, no psychedelic, no plant medicine, nothing. They came closer to God through prayer and through mere dedication and awareness of his constant presence and awareness of the truth of who he is in his word. But a lot of people who smoke weed today they seem to think that it's benefiting them. They seem to think that it's spiritually beneficial, that it's helped them. And this was me, actually. I smoked weed, and I was actually receiving a lot of great things. I was thought my life was going in a great direction. I was the last out of my friends to actually try it. I was like, I don't need to try it. You know, I'm happy without it. I have a great time. I laugh. I have joy without it. Don't want to get hooked on it. I'm good. But I broke my back in football. I was starting to get a little bit, you know, depressed, not being able to do any sports. I'm just now sedentary and I'm like, all right, I'll try it. Instantly, I loved it. Instantly, I had an amazing time. Instantly, I was laughing beyond belief and I began to do it more and more and more. And I began to research it and I began to say, whoa, it's actually so good for you. And whoa, like, you know, there's so many great things about it. I've been lied to my whole life and I wanted to get into the cannabis industry. I became fascinated with better glassware and vapes, doing it healthily. So I would vape to not have smoke, which is, you know, can be carcinogenic. And I would take edibles and have massive spiritual experiences, actually. I would begin to read a lot of spiritual books, books on psychology, the nature of the mind, where thoughts come from, Sigmund Freud, Carl Jung, um, Rollo May, different philosophers. I was so intrigued by this stuff. And I started getting really actually into Buddhism. 
I just naturally felt drawn to Buddhism. I would meditate high on weed. Didn't know anything about this. I didn't even know that they used weed for a long time, but I would just feel a desire to meditate on it. I thought I was getting kind of psychic abilities. I thought I was getting like actually beneficial spiritual things and channeling higher energies and channeling more wisdom. I thought it was great. I thought I was developing more in love, yet at the same time, under the surface, there were actually really dark things that were forming. There were a lot of dark things that were forming, a fear, an anxiety, a confusion. And many people that I knew, many people that I know experienced the same exact thing. Many people actually want to quit and they try, but they just can't. And then on the surface, it's like everything's good, that it's fun. But when you actually get deep, when you actually ask yourself, when you actually look back and take a, take a bigger look at your life and how you feel about doing it and doing it that often, many people don't like it. Many people don't want to be. They try to quit and they can't. Why is it that people who get into weed and who become spiritual, many times they naturally get drawn to these same religions that we have historical documents talking about weed being used for? You know, Hinduism, yoga, so many hippies, so many people who smoke weed and get into this become like yoga teachers by going to an ashram or getting into Qigong and Tibetan philosophies of Buddhism and just the whole Eastern religions, all of that Eastern religious thinking and, and philosophies on life. It's very common that people smoke weed and get into that. People smoke weed, they leave Christ, they leave the church and they get into that. I met so many people that's where they have a spiritual awakening in their early days of, of smoking weed, that they have some spiritual awakening that makes them realize who they truly are, what they're truly meant to do, the divinity of life, the sanctity of life. And they have so much love in their heart and divine feelings. And these spirits, these demons are actually giving you these things. They can actually make you feel incredible. That's why people who actually worship demons knowingly, they receive great pleasure out of it. You know, Satanists or people who knowingly worship demons, not just like unknowingly, they receive great pleasure. A lot of people actually worship Satan, sell their souls to Satan for fame, for money, because Satan, the Bible says, is the ruler of this world. And he even offered Jesus all the kingdoms, all the money, all the fame, all the wealth. On his 40-day fast, Jesus said, no, you shall worship the Lord thy God and him only you shall serve. You know, Satan has this power. And demons can give these feelings of great love. You know, Satan can disguise as an angel of light. There are actual demons in the spiritual realm. And these demons serve an actual hierarchy, a leader, and his name is Satan, who caused the fall of humankind. And Jesus came to redeem humankind from that fall, where evil entered the world, sin entered the world, and that we inherit this sin genetically. And epigenetics shows that even behavior is passed down genetically. Behavior of our ancestors, decisions and behavior is passed down epigenetically. And this is what we've inherited. But those people who, who start smoking weed and they get really into this and they get really into all Eastern religions, they become a yoga teacher, me, a certified yoga teacher. And this isn't just me. This isn't just my story. Many people I know, many people I have known who get into this, they come away from Christ. They go away from Christ. They find out, oh, Jesus Christ isn't actually God. And it starts luring them away. It's because these demons behind cannabis, behind weed, they don't want you to know Jesus. And if you're taking, you know, edibles and smoking weed and, and doing these things, not just recreationally, but spiritually, that you believe it's beneficial and you're seeking something, I'm telling you right now, Jesus is what you're looking for. Now, I didn't just have these beliefs on weed after I was saved, after I came to Christ and realized that Jesus is God. I actually stopped smoking weed a couple years before that. I actually just started realizing this is not good. I do not want this. This is not bettering my life. So I stopped doing it all together. But as I got saved, as I got stronger in the Lord, as I got more discerning and started encountering Many demons in people who were afflicting them and tormenting them and they would give their life to Christ. The demons would get cast out and dots started to connect. Psychedelic experiences. You know, weed is a mild hallucinogen. It's categorized as a mild hallucinogen. And when you take very high dose edibles, you actually have very similar experiences to psychedelics, LSD, mushrooms. That's what people do it for. That's what the ancient Hindus did. High dose 
cannabis for spiritual experiences to contact divine beings. And when you take weed, when you smoke weed, when you get high, you are opening the door spiritually for beings to communicate with you, to lure you away, to deceive you, to guide your life. Instead of the Holy Spirit to guide you, to lead you, these demonic spirits begin to lead you and they're very deceptive. They will keep you in. They will keep you engaged. They will keep you lured until your life in the grand scheme of things is not going anywhere. Until you're actually relying on it to feel spiritual. That's what happened to me. I was just like, relying on smoking weed to feel spiritual and to get that spiritual feeling because it does open you up to the spiritual realm. It does open you up to these things for a, a greater connectivity to these beings. That's why the ancient Indians used it to communicate with those demons. It, be, it facilitated it more easily. And actually in ancient China, in the Cao Chen Qing, I believe is the name of the historical document that talks about, they believed that you communicate with devils through long-term cannabis usage and that it lightens one's body and, and allows communication to spirits. This is historical document of China talking about cannabis where it actually allows you to communicate with spirits. And that's what happens. People think they get psychic abilities. People think they have a spiritual awakening, that they're a light worker. They go on this whole new age journey and they think these all these things about them after weed gets introduced to their life. It's very common. And if you're smoking weed, if you're somebody who's done it in the past or who's doing it right now, I'm telling you, Jesus is real. God is very real. You don't need to smoke weed to have these spiritual experiences. You don't need to smoke weed to access the truth. God is here right now. Jesus Christ is here right now as you watch this video. And he loves you very, very much. Everything that you're seeking, everywhere you've been, any state of your heart and Times you might have had a bad experience on weed, like many people who've had horrible anxiety, panic attacks, fear that has struck them very hard. That is very real. And Jesus sees you. And Jesus wants to heal you. He is very real and he is alive right now. Just open your heart to him. Open your mind to him. Ask him to come into your life. Choose to follow him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. In him is perfect love. The Bible says God is love. And that perfect love casts out all fear. Jesus Christ is truth. Jesus Christ is love. And he casts out all fear. And the Bible says that in him all things consist. Everything that you're seeking, everything that you're looking for is in Christ. It's in him. He's not just some religious figure. He's not just some figment of the imagination. He is just as real as these demons, even more real. These spirits that people communicate with. You can communicate with Jesus right now. You can pause this video. You can exit out. You can run to your room. You can get on your knees. You can get in bed and you can talk to Jesus. You can, you can pray to the Holy Spirit to come into you, to come into your life, to guide you, to speak to you, to get all of these demons that might be tormenting you, causing depression, causing anxiety, causing confusion of your identity, lostness, all these deep pains that you've gone through can all be healed by Christ, by the power and authority of Jesus. He can heal and restore everything sevenfold. You don't need to do this anymore. You can be free. Today, right now, as you watch this video, you can go throw away your bong. You can go throw away your multi-hundred dollar bong, your vape, you know, your weed, any weed that you might have. You can throw it away right now and it can be totally done for for the rest of your life. You can quit. You can get rid of it. And if you think you can just do it occasionally, I'm telling you, this will hinder your life. This will limit your ability also to serve God. If you're a Christian and you do this, and you're doing it maybe for physical reasons of, of helping your body heal or you know, you're in pain, find another source. Trust me, you are opening doors in the spiritual realm that will affect you, that will draw away something that is more precious than your body. Fear not who can kill your body, but he who can cast your soul into hell. The soul is more important. The soul is eternal. Don't fear the things of this world in your temporary body. Focus on your soul, the righteousness of your soul, being more like Christ. I want to pray for you. If you want to quit, if you've decided that I don't want to do this, I've known deep down always that this has just not been good for me, that it has led me astray, that it's led me into these things that 
really have no fulfillment at the end. All these spiritual practices, I, I did this for this many years, I did this, and I have no peace. I have no fulfillment. I want to pray for you right now. I pray right now in Jesus' name that every single spirit of addiction, spirit of bondage, spirit that has come in through weed, be gone right now in Jesus' name. Leave your life right now by the power of the blood of Jesus. Every spirit and demon of Shiva, Shakti, Brahma, Vishnu, every single demon that has entered your life, I cast you out right now in Jesus' name. I cast you out right now, every spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you fill, that you fill them right now, that you fill their heart, you fill their mind, Lord, that you show them you're real, that you reveal yourself to them, God. Reveal yourself to them powerfully, Jesus. Come into their room right now. Come into their heart. Holy Spirit, make yourself known to them that you are everything that they've been seeking, that you are the comforter, that you are the deliverer, that you are their savior, and that you love them more than they can even know. Lord, make yourself known. Break every chain that they've had that they're trying to quit from. Free them like you did on the cross by your blood and by your power. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope this video blessed you. I hope this shed light on the actual roots of cannabis, of weed, and how it was used and what it actually does. And many people share the same story as me. And if you do, please reach out to me. You know, I would love to be able to connect and, and help any questions that you might have because I've been through this. You know, I've had a lot of, I, you know, even when I was smoking a lot of weed, and I would do it at school. I, I literally would have anxiety attacks where I couldn't even speak. I used to be very outgoing. And then I suddenly became very introverted. And I suddenly thought this was my true self. I suddenly thought that that was actually my actual identity. But it wasn't. It never was. And God has been restoring me massively as I've continued to seek him and understand the truth that's in God's word. Read the Bible. Study the Bible. And pray to the Lord. Seek him with your whole heart. You will be restored. He will heal you. Just seek him past all the enemy's attempts to get you not to. Seek after the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you and have a great day.